You must read Craig Murray if you want the truth of what's happening in this world. He writes a regular column and he has quite a few millions of people follow him. And at the moment he's dealing with the Assange case. Okay, this is September the 7th by Craig Murray. Media freedom, show me the mainstream media journalist opposing the torture of Assange. Today, the corporate media that cried media freedom when Extinction Rebellion blocked the billionaire-owned propaganda presses is silent as Julian Assange's Calvary for bringing real truth unfiltered to the public moves on to its next station. Calvary, that's very interesting that Craig Murray compares Julian Assange to Jesus. Calvary is the place of the skull where Jesus was crucified. And on his journey to Calvary, he carried a cross accompanied by a great mob of people. Now then, if you think about it, Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and the crowd stripped the trees of their palm branches and waved them crying hallelujah to the king. Now Julian Assange was a rock star at one time and that's what happened to him. That's what happened to Jesus. The priests arrested him and then the crowd turned against him and he was crucified. And so the next thing is the station of the cross. The next part is he says he's going, um, Craig Murray in the next part says they're going into the macabre Gothic architecture of the Old Bailey. That is the next stage of the cross when they nail Jesus to the cross. So I'll carry on now. The Tories appeared remarkably tolerant in the days when Extinction Rebellion were causing general disruption to the public. But to threaten the interests of billionaire paymasters is something against which the entire political class will unite. At a time when the government is mooting, designating Extinction Rebellion as serious organised crime, the right-wing bequiffed Muppet Keir Starmer was piously condemning the group, stating the free press is the cornerstone of democracy and we must do all we can to protect it. Well, we've got neither a free press nor democracy. It is surely time we stopped talking about free press, says Craig, I'm continuing, as if it was Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine is the one who wrote the first Bill of Human Rights and William Cobbett, that's about free trade, as if it were them disputing the, distributing the pamphlets. Print media is now the subject of phenomenal ownership concentration, nothing to do with freedom. It, pro, it broadcasts the propaganda of some very nasty billionaires to a shrinking audience of mostly old people. The same ownerships have, of course, moved into TV and radio and increasingly into new media. 
and now have a political control over they now have political control over, over even the BBC, not only the big mon monopolies. At the time, the co wait, I just want to read that again. The same ownerships have, of course, moved into TV and radio and increasingly into new media and now have political control over all media. At the same time, the corporate gatekeepers of Facebook and Twitter, Twitter purposefully limit the flow of readers to independent online media. The idea of a free press as an open market of democratic ideas has no real meaning in modern society until anti-monopoly action is taken, which is the last thing those in power will do. Quite the opposite. They are, are actively seeking to eliminate dissent even from the internet. I do not want permanently to close down the sun or the telegraph, neither do Extinction Rebellion, but their excellent action is an important opening to the debate about control of public narrative. The press control the public narrative and people are not in agreement with the public narrative. It's not true. Anyway, about control of narrative, not least on climate change. David Aronovich, who's the main guy working for, da for um, Murdoch's newspapers, he tweeted out that in fact, 99% of the time, there was no editorial interference from Murdoch. Quite right, but that is the point. Murdoch employs reliable right-wingers like Aronovich. He does not need to tell them what to write. Show me the Murdoch journalist who has more than once published about the human rights abuses against the Palestinians. Murdoch ejected his own son from his media empire because James was insufficiently enthusiastic about the slow genocide of the Palestinians and does not believe that the market will magically fix climate change. The corporate media selects its mouthpieces. Scotland has become an extreme example where 55% of the population support independence but only about 5% of state and corporate media journalists support independence. Only 5%. That is control of the narrative. Julian Assange has been a light in this darkness. WikiLeaks have opened a window into the secret world of war crime, murder and corruption that underlies so much of the governance we live under throughout the free world. Government corruption global. Coming in the wake of the public realization that we had been blatantly lied to into the destruction of Iraq, there was a time when it seemed Assange would lead us into a new age where whistleblowers, citizen journalists, and a democratic internet would revolutionize the public information. 
with the billionaire stranglehold shattered. Julian was an idealist. He still is. Huh. That seems less hopeful today as the internet world is now corporatized. Julian is in jail and continuing today is an extradition hearing that has been one long abuse of process. Vanessa, this is me telling you, Vanessa Baritza, notoriously corrupt judge, background corrupt, husband corrupt, chosen by the corrupt Westminster Court all along to carry out this persecution and the corrupt government working with the, correct West, working with the corrupt Westminster Court. Now then, the appalling conditions of, con of solitary confinement in which Julian has been kept in the high security Belmarsh prison with no access to his legal team or a working computer to his papers or to his mail have taken a huge toll on his physical and mental health. The UN representative, Niels Meltzer, says Julian is a victim of torture. A media which is up in arms about attack on Navalny has no emotion for state torture victim other than contempt. I want to tell you, Vanessa Baritza, she's like the corrupt judge on my big banner. And she has a bag on her head so that she pretends not to hear or to see. And, but really, she sees very well and she is so cruel. And so that is what she's doing. She doesn't care. She is incredibly, incredibly cool, cruel, and she doesn't care what happens. And, and this is to show what will happen to you if you expose war crimes. And the FBI director has said it's about Julian Assange, put his head on a pike. It is constantly asked by Julian's supporters why the media do not see the assault on a publisher and journalist as a threat to themselves. The answer is that the state, he's talking about the BBC here, and corporate media are confident in their firm alliance with the government. They have no intention of challenging the status quo. Their protection from those kicking Assange has been to join in the killing and the kicking, sorry, has, uh, Freudian slip, has been to join in the kicking of the football, as I mentioned before. Now, he says, I hope to be in court today and throughout the extradition hearing, the public gallery of 80 in the Old Bailey has been reduced to nine. Five seats are for Julian's family and friends, and there are just four seats for the general public due to COVID amongst 80 seats. Now then, here is Craig. I went this morning at 6 a.m to the Old Bailey to check out the queue and work out the system in order to get a seat. But the first six people in the queue were all people who entirely off their own bat, without my knowledge and with no coordination between them, had arrived while London slept just to reserve a place for me. I chatted cheerily with them for a while and then came back to write this, but just got round the corner where I burst into tears 
overwhelmed by all this kindness. You see, people do care about Julian. And I want to say that when we, my team and I demonstrated outside the Old Bailey on Monday, the cars that went by, a good 50% of them all tooted their horns in support. Anyway, Craig says, I have to pull myself together now and get into that court. The rest of, the, of, the, of his report is what happened in the court. Thank you. He's amazing, Craig Murray. He's absolutely amazing. <laughs>